Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Endless Legend, where today begins the tale of the Broken Lords. So, another very dust-based faction, although, like I was saying last time, uh, probably you're going to see some pretty different outcomes here. So the Broken Lords are a faction of knights dependent on dust for survival. They exist only as spirits wrapped in great suits of armor. And you might say, well that's just ghosts. How did that happen? That's a touch more... Even, even given the supernatural things in the game so far, that seems odd. You're gonna... Listen, you're gonna find out. They are noble warriors who wear the polished armor of chivalry and adhering to its ideals, even though they are immaterial and have lost much of their humanity and grasp of grammar. Uh, also, you know, this is a time, like, the way wars go in this game, it's not that unreasonable to... to wear the polished armor of chivalry. It's not like anybody has a gun or anything. So, uh, we have a real appetite for dust, as you might imagine. The food resource does not exist for the Broken Lords. We do not have biological bodies with which to eat the food. Most of us don't even have mouths. Uh, we can spend dust in our cities to create population. And our units do not naturally heal. We must pour dust into a unit in order to heal it. Um, I'm not sure if... I'm assuming that the, the HP regen improvement co uh, conflux it just basically does nothing for this faction. I mean, it's not just HP regen, it, right? It lowers the it lowers the upkeep cost of the uh, units by some amount. So I guess that's still something. Uh, our dust eclipse effect is during the eclipse, our units and heroes gain the ability to soul burn greatly boost their attack at the expense of their health and then of course um <clears throat> after the battle provided they survive you can pour some dust into them to to quickly heal them back up uh we get extra dust on any tile that yields dust and that's kind of it it's not a large number of traits but it is a pretty it's a pretty transformative group um the fact that we can heal our units back to full uh, instantly means that Broken Lords have the ability to sustain an attack in a way that few other factions can match. Um, as long as your units aren't actually dying, you can take sort of heavy trades in combat, and if you're cycling people to the back when they're injured, you can just have an army that is once again full size, full health the very next turn. Uh, that can be very tough for some factions to keep up with. Uh, and then, as you might imagine, of course, we get some military units. We'll, we'll look in on those in a moment. Uh, we start the game with the Empire Mint and Advanced Alloys, the Tier 1 Glass, Steel, and Titanium tech. Now, notice, this is a little bit different from the others. Um, as part of the Endless... This, this is an Endless Legend community patch change. Uh, the Armor and Weapons techs in Era 1 got folded together into just one technology that does both of those things. Uh, even if we are going to get the Era 2 versions of these, it still does matter because you can see the technology also reduces the cost of building titanium or glass steel items. Um, so yeah, the tier one tier one strategic gear, not great. We'll have a we'll have a look in game uh, and determine whether it's actually worth spending the resources on. But it's nice to have the option, I think. And let's uh, just, again, swap you to some. That's not what I wanted. There we go. And yeah. Do we want to take it up? I mean, l listen, ELCP Impossible is no joke. We're, we've won a bunch of games in a row now, but most of them were close at least. I'm a little nervous about my Broken Lords play. I hope nobody views this as a, <laughs> as sheer cowardice. We're going to leave it on impossible for this game. Uh, and with that, let's get to it. I'll see y'all in a second. We were different once. We fought, drank, and loved as mortal beings. But our world changed and we faced a stark choice. Alter our bodies or perish. Yet survival is not the same as life. Now we are prisoners of the armor that binds us and the dust that sustains us. We must drain dust, drain energy, or die. Where is our honor now, Lords of the Amber Plains? And what matters more? To reclaim our honor? 
or sustain our bodies. Aha, I buried the lead. We're not just ghost robots, we're vampire ghost robots. What's up? What do you think of that? This is beautiful, actually. Some desert terrain could be a very, uh, very powerful start for us. Actually, Yao. This is, yeah, this is really good. Uh, this tile's effectively, well, I was going to say it's effectively not an anomaly because it only has four points of resources on it, on it for us, but it does still have that approval boost. This is like a really, really strong starting location. Um, let's, as ever, fan out here and have a look around. Interesting. We started directly adjacent to another player. Okay, that may very well uh, that may very well shape our entire early game. Yo, this region is also great. Holy crow! This this tile might actually be better than that one. We still get we still get a um uh, an approval anomaly, but it has more points of resources on it than this one does. It's, some of the surrounding tiles on this one are a little bit stronger. Um, let me, let's just, let's just have the game do the math for us. 14, 8, 14 versus 11, 9, 13. So probably this is better, but like this is an extremely strong city too. Yeah, we'll go ahead and do this one. I'll, I'll just have our hero, um, stick with the settler out here because we're just going to look that way probably. Where am I relative to the edges of the map? Okay, pretty close to the bottom. I cannot move the map any more upward than this. Very interesting to see that we were put directly adjacent to another player. I wonder I wonder if that is telling us that this map overall is quite small, or that this landmass rather, um, overall is quite small. Wow, look at that. The first, the first burrow out down here is going to be very high value as well. This is, this is quite a start. Uh, so I would love language square. If we could, if we could get to talk to this home region. Yeah, pretty good. Okay. So, uh, the cost of a point of population in a city is based on the number of points of population already in that city. It's not like probably a big surprise. Uh, I think we are, in fact, just going to go ahead and buy ourselves a body immediately. Is that wise? Probably, right? It's got to be. It turns out resources are good, and they are how you win these games. Wow, the number of total um, anomaly tiles in this region is, is quite bananas. So, we got a Yotus village here... A Herna village there. A couple of a couple of ranged units, which is interesting because the Broken Lords don't really have a very good ranged attacker themselves. Um, if we take a quick look at our at our units here, we have our starting unit, the Stalwart, just a basic sort of um, heavy infantry type guy. You can see 52 starting defense. Uh, we have swords and also access, I believe, to spears. Uh, nope, it's just swords and swords. So we always have infantry slayer, um, but that's that's useful against a lot of factions, right? Uh, not great attack, not great damage, very survivable. Uh, our secondary unit here, the rider, is a fast-moving skirmish cavalry type unit uh, with the built-in life drain capacity. Life drain. Uh, siphons off an amount of health from the enemy based, I believe, solely on the unit's level. But what's really interesting about Life Drain is, um, as you might imagine it, like it, you know, it removes the health from the enemy, it heals the rider. But it happens before the attacks are exchanged. So the if the Life Drain health is health loss is enough to kill the enemy, the attack doesn't happen, which sometimes can be very very valuable. Um, and then also, you know, yeah, they're just they have charge. They're just a fast moving. A fast-moving cavalry unit. Uh, you can see stun there. Probably, I, I'm assuming that's hammer equipment, and it might be just totally built in. Uh, and then this is our our era two unit, the dust bishop. Dust bishops are incredibly powerful, but they're a little bit weird. This is a part of the reason I 
I'm a little leery of describing them as just an just a, a good ranged unit. You can see they have very poor attack, but they have this life siphon ability, where whenever a Dust Bishop deals damage to an enemy with its ranged attack, it heals itself and also every friendly adjacent unit for an amount based on the amount of damage it did. So they get a really high starting damage value, but pretty poor attack, so in most cases they're they're doing half damage. But the overall amount of healing that a Dust Bishop can put out over the course of a battle is really tremendous. They are not ranged units in the same way as an Orc, which is just going to try to kill the enemy as quickly as possible, but they can give your armies staying power that is sometimes unbeatable. Like, there, there are some situations where that's just going to be more than the enemy can handle especially given like the high base defense, for example, on your uh, on your stalwarts. So since we know it only takes one person on the technology to get it to two turns, I do want to put this second person somewhere else. I think maybe getting the Founder's Memorial done as quickly as possible, probably a good idea. We have a special version of the Founder's Memorial that gives more dust than the others because, of course, we don't get any food from it. Uh, and I think this is how this is how we're going to begin. Um, do we have any? We don't have any unique technologies apart from that, right? No, everything's everything's pretty bog standard from there. Oh, while we're in here, we should though look at these. So, thirty units of one luxury resource to get one hundred and thirty die. Not bad. Pacify eight villages for tactical training could happen. It seems at least plausible that that could happen. And obviously we are very, very much hoping for some early dust output from these ruins. All right, can we get a sense of who this is? I, I need to, I need to meet them. Got ourselves 30 dust. I should probably read our faction quest. Hold on, we should, just in case. Escort a broken lord's hero with two infantry to inspect that ruin. Okay, so we probably need to reform. I, I did not remember that that was how that quest started. But okay, we'll, we'll do that. So, in fact, I'm going to have you just wrap around the mountain here to the north. We're going to have these two meet up, search this ruin, chat with these folks. The hero obviously is going to run off and gallivant around and do other things, and then we'll warp the hero onto those units as they approach. And I see the sparkles of a distant ruin. Okay, nothing. It was nothing. All right, we're gonna check out the area just to the south. We'll run past the uh, the village here, and hopefully they'll give us a nice easy quest. So, with most factions, I'd be like, ah, oh, yeah, we should definitely just buy out the Founders Memorial really quickly. Probably not with these ones, right? We should we should save the dust. Okay, I do have to stay on that for the second turn. That is a shame. We have no indication of where Blue's village is. I'd like to see what faction Blue is, but it could very well be the case that this is like an extremely wide and narrow area, and I do not want to spend all the movement necessary to go all the way over there. So, <clears throat> a new beginning. A new beginning for a people who have done some really, really horrifically tremendous evil uh, for the sake of self-preservation, which, to be fair, is the reason that most people do it. The quakes and fires appear to be over. We lost a city and are now homeless, but we remain strong, or we are strong, and remain unbowed. The first step is to secure our new home, to found a city, build an army, and explore the ancient places. For our experience tells us this if it tells us nothing else. The ancient ruins scattered across the map are places of great knowledge, great wealth, and great danger. For all of those reasons, we must explore and exploit them. With caution, however, any place of great value will be guarded by creatures of great strength. We must not forget this. Exploration will also take their mind off our condition, and this new method for dealing with it. Dust is expensive and difficult to exploit, but this new way, this draining of living souls to sustain our own forms, it goes against who we are. It violates our principles, our honor. It is everything we have been fighting against. And yet, it is easy. I mean, 
is it everything? Have you, have you been fighting dust ghost vampire robots? Because if so, that's pretty sick. Congratulations. That's a, that's a real neat thing. Um, so we probably, we definitely want to get this done quickly so that we can run this booster while we still only have one city. I do think we want to make this expansion like very, very quickly, much quicker than I ordinarily would. I mean, I keep saying that, right? At this point, making that second city around turn 10 is like just normal for me, I guess. Oh, the other one thing we should look at, uh, Baron Jocelyn Duvall. So Jocelyn Duvall has dust efficiency two and army defense boost two. Also, as you can see here, just good melee combatant stats. As far as infantry lords go, this is a pretty solid one. Uh, I think we're, we're likely to keep Jocelyn as a, as a commander type hero. Uh, also, I love her very spooky helmet. I wish I could zoom in on it. Yeah, army defense boost two is plus 10 plus 30%. And then our units naturally have high base values. So like that 30% is going to be quite meaningful. And of course, standard infantry tree. Um, the Broken Lords faction tree really doesn't have anything in it for army command. Like distributed defenses is not a bad skill, but it is in a tremendously bad place in the tree. So realistically, you're not going to get it. Uh, siege engine is is kind of useful. Every unit in your army getting a bonus of two siege, uh, two fortification damage means a full army gains a really huge amount of fortification damage. But I don't know. Oh man, we should make sure we pick up pillage and probably pretty early. I bet pillage is going to be really important for us. Okay. Lots of important stuff. Lots of plans. Let's go say howdy. Uh, there's a Dorgeshi village in Uska that must be destroyed. Have we a sense of Uska? No, not really. Well, that looks like it could be a Dorgeshi village. It's the right type. Yep. And we can fight them near enough the city. Okay. That's sorry. That's not even the village we care about. Uh, do I want to contact this village and potentially pacify Blue's village for them? No, I don't think so. Let's make them build for it. Hmm. That's a tough one. Second Citizen's like in the 80s, I think. No, 101. Giving up 50 dust early. That's a little scary. This could be a three village region, though. And we intend to inhabit it quickly, so... I think I am going to do it, probably. Wow, another empty one. Rough. Maybe the um, maybe the percentages are different than they were when I actually knew them. It feels that that way, doesn't it? Like I just don't know what I'm talking about <laughs> when it comes to how often you find an empty ruin. Because gosh, we see sure seem to find empty ruins a lot. So I probably still want this fairly quickly, but also we definitely want these things done. Like the Empire Mint's a big deal. Yeah. All right. Focus up. Focus up. We'll we'll get the mill foundry right as the uh, right as the other thing finishes. All right, let's give them the let's give them the damn beans. Bring a hero to another village in the region, please. Oh, please let it be this one. Damn it. All right, well, continue to move this way. Maybe it'll be a village up here somewhere. That would be, that would be awfully convenient. I mean, I may as well talk to you. Colonize the region. Okay, well, at the very least, we have confirmation that this is Uska, but like, the odds of it not being Uska, we're pretty low. The odds of, the odds of there being two Dorgeshi regions adjacent to us seemed, seemed low. We may end up having a, it, it may end up making more sense to just burn this thing and then rebuild it. Not that I love doing that. Let's 
So we have to get to 100 before we can buy the next population. It would be super helpful if we could find some good ruins. Really? They just don't want to talk to me. Okay, I mean, I guess that's allowed. I was hoping to at least discover the location of the, um... The Dorgeshi village in question here. I think what we're going to do is let's let our hero move to here, search this ruin, and then warp up, talk to this village, and then search that ruin. We can get a whole bunch of XP real quick there. Now, I probably don't want to make any more movement than this. Okay, 30 dust is meaningful. Because we want to warp up here when we still have at least one point, right? All right, what about you? How are y'all feeling? Uh, okay, the Delvers. Activate two boosters to prove your wisdom and power. I would love to do that, actually. And obviously, Delvers, um, they, make a good, uh, they make a good assimilation for anybody, but especially for a faction that gets population from their... Uh, from their dust. The door remains closed and the mechanism requires quantities of dust to open. Well, all right. I will spend my dust. I'm glad I didn't click the, the get population button yet. Defeat the army protecting the ruins. Worth noting, we do now have enough boosters to pacify this village. Uh, I mean, this one's just gonna be our units running at them and it's a drider we can we can auto-resolve that. All right, we have become archaeologists, plus 20% research cost reduction for Era 1 technologies. Hey, pretty handy. You have unearthed an endless artifact. It is in poor condition, and it appears to be part of a larger construction. The question now is how to restore it. Gee, I bet I know the answer. The nobles are unhappy. I understand their reasoning. We try to rebuild our nation and survive the changes in our planet, but the exploitation of dust is slow and expensive. To simply leech life from others is fast, easy, and gives one a feeling of power. It is a heady thrill that gives sensations of virility and perception. Almost invincibility. That is basically, these are the two core components of invincibility. Marquis Saluzzo is perhaps the worst. Though all the nobles and fanatics seek ancient relics to give them power, the bauble that the Marquis has found give, has given him great strength of persuasion and an enhanced ability to drain life. His speeches make it all seem so easy. Exploit the lesser peoples for our own glory, rule the planet from a position of strength, and turn those who would defy us into weakened slaves. But I cannot accept this. It is expedient, but that does not make it just or right. Sadly, my hand has been forced, and I have little choice but to let the sages and alchemists study, seeking an answer that is pleasing to their greedy patrons. We will forge ahead with research and improve our knowledge, though I do it for other reasons. For my part, I would like to see our people resist temptation, even if it presents a risk. There is a reason that the first word of the royal seal is honor. Listen, honor is a very squishy word that a lot of people define in a lot of different ways. So, research six technologies from Era 1. Uh, obviously, we're moving pretty quickly on that. We're also making lots of XP on Jocelyn Duvall. So, obviously, we'll go grab this, and then we'll turn around and see about finding that other village over here. Uh, and I guess... So, we're going to finish the mill foundry... I kind of want to save the gold. We could fire this at any moment. Like, the approval from it doesn't really help us. I do want to fire this right away, though. Let's, like... Let's get pushing on that... That, um... Technology. But yeah, I don't think I want to fire the gold just yet. I want to wait until we have a few more buildings, probably. Like, probably even waiting until we're about to put down the second city to do it. So what is our next great concern... It's probably not pillage just yet. It's probably this, right? We could we could get to fervent quite easily here. Mm -hmm. 
It's a shame we didn't start near any water at all. We could we could settle south. There's a pretty like there's a couple of tiles around here that'll give us access to an awful lot of river for aquapulvistics purposes. Alright, another 40 dust. Wonderful news. And actually, very solid dust output. Alright, let's get this mill foundry done, and then I think it's maybe time to build the settler. Obviously, you wouldn't want to do so before getting your foundry. Now, one of my units is very slightly wounded. We must spend 0.4 dust to fix it. Somehow, I think we will, uh, we will survive the expenditure. Okay, so they're down here somewhere. That's fine. We'll sweep through this region, get ourselves a little bit of vision, maybe get a, another district, or another ruin or two, rather. So right now we're at 32. This is going to gain us another 6 plus 15%. Okay, still longer than I would like. And spreading out here is going to get us... Yeah, man. It's approval neutral. And dust extremely positive. I gotta say, we have a very powerful start. Alright, we'll grab that and then we'll we'll head south from there. Interesting. So we are we are being pressed between two players immediately. Um, these aren't rainbowy enough, right? This isn't roving clans, is it? Could be, I suppose. Well, we'll know soon enough, I'm sure. Not, uh, not very happy about that one. Pretty, pretty bummed out, actually. So do we have, we do not currently know of any, oh no, we have one strategic resource. But I'm kind of thinking maybe we just go for for the basic science tech here. It's hard to justify early marketplace technology, I think, because you really want to be pouring population or pouring dust rather into population so badly. Here, let's get public library and then we'll uh, we'll figure out whatever's whatever afterward. Do we need to keep everybody on this to get the three turn? We do. Okay. Well, let's let's keep it up then. Let's make that happen. We probably will we'll still be we'll be able to hit 40 influence. We'll still be able to hit a very basic empire plan here. I do think that hmm, I wonder if we should buy another point of population in Ardim or if we should rush population in the new city too. Hmm, that's interesting. I mean, we're not going to put any influence into the military quadrant, but I'm probably not going to do the other thing either. Right, like we want our 20% science boost. I have to imagine. How expensive is this? 157, we're plus 41. Now, you know what? You can keep, keep pushing. Probably sewer before the burrow, right? There it is. Okay. Somebody hit era two. It is turn 11. <laughs> you know, not that I'm accusing anyone of anything. Just pointing out. Oh, eclipse time already, is it? Interesting. Okay, so we've got a pacification there. We're not doing super well on our timing here, like three on turn 12. Not not quite what you're hoping for. And we don't really have a lot of temple ruins nearby. Hmm, 
I'm not sure what I want to do here. So we're about to finish the next step of our faction quest. What do we get when we do that? Some emeralds. It's pretty whatever. Uh, hmm. And like, part of me really wants to get down here to pillage, a, to burn down a village, which gets us one pacification plus this pacification plus the population. But it's a long walk, and I wonder if... Probably the best thing to do is to split up on that, right? We should be able to handle two Dorgeshi with a single unit. Or with a, with a single unit plus the hero. So we're going to send the other ones off this way and just hope to find some... Oh! Okay, blue is Alayi. Interesting. Not sure how I feel about that. So, contrary to what we saw in that last game, the Alayi are kind of bad at, expl uh, at expanding. Um, their, their cities are relatively expensive uh, in terms of approval. And even their, their boroughs and their districts are, are tough to build because they all require pearls. So, they might not be super competitive with us for land, which obviously would be helpful given that we're being pressed from another side. Yeah, it's interesting. All right, so this turn we fire the gold booster. I was really hoping to get some speed confluxes nearby. Uh, this turn we fire the gold booster, which gets us some more pacifications. Was that two or three? It was two, but still not bad. Probably the best thing to do is just to cut straight through here. And then, like, do I want to fire the emeralds? We're already going to drop back to not being 90% no matter what here. I don't think it can matter. No, I, I don't think so. I think that, let's just go ahead and put down the city. And get to work. So, really wonderful starting news here, and then obviously, uh, very slightly short. Um, but obviously, this is great. Um, yeah, cool. This will be some very productive early game cities. Uh, get to 10 technologies from Research Arrow 1. Okay. I'm working on it. So yeah, firing the emeralds would not would not have put us in a better position, really. You give plus five percent attack. The the Yotus, I believe, is plus vision. Yeah. That's that's an okay assimilation effect. So they attacked me with their Skyfin because they have a large supporting army nearby. I was gonna say, we're probably safe from a Skyfin. Like I think our two units will kill a Skyfin, but. With the rest of their units involved, there's no way we win. This bar, this is just showing us main army versus main army, I'm pretty sure. So that's that's a real bummer. Let me make sure I have our, our units. Wait, what? Oh, it's the Eclipse, right. I forgot about the fact that the allow you get to attack twice during an Eclipse. Uh, well, that is... Game losingly bad. No, probably not. But it is bad, bad, bad. And they're putting the Skyfin in a position where it literally can't be. Okay. I see how you want to do this. Well, fall back to the dust clouds. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing we can do here, right? There's no, there's no version of this where we win. Uh, I guess we could run up and I don't know. I chose to make this manual because I was like, well, let's try to maximize the damage we can deal. Mostly, I was thinking about trying to jump the sky fin, but as things stand, doesn't matter. 
All right, so. Blue has proven that they cannot be trusted even a tiny little bit and that they must be killed. You know, I was thinking about maybe letting them go. God, what a shitty, like... Having to pay all that money to restore our hero this early in the game really sucks. The loss of the the loss of the one military unit is not so bad, but everything else about that is is super 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 bad. Well, let's get our gold extractor going because that'll that'll help a lot. Is that the right thing to do? You know what? Maybe we get the other extractor going because it turns out we're going to be going to war soon. Yeah, I'm not going to grab Pillage, because we're not going to turn around right now. We're going to continue this way. If I'm right, and we have what it takes to clear out that Dorgeshi village, that'll put us at seven pacified villages. It really is a shame that there weren't, uh, there weren't three people in that region, or three, three villages in that region. Okay, so this is, this is the one... We'll wait until next turn to buy the hero back because the cost will come down a little bit more. Yeah, all right. These cities are both building things that are tremendously important. That is some real cold-blooded play from the Alayi player and like also play that was only made possible through extraordinary luck on their part that the Dust Eclipse happened when it did. So, so I'm double mad. Me? Mad at a video game? It's more likely than you think. Will this include? No, it will not. Okay, well, let's just fight him. I think we can do this. Brideki are fast, but they're, they're pretty fragile, um, and they don't really do that much damage. The only way this goes really sideways is if we, um, if we end up getting stunned, which could happen. Yep, first attack's done. Oof, zero damage, huh? And then re-stunning him. And I don't have the movement to get to, oh my god. This time I have the movement, but I can't hit for shit. Why is my attack down? Why would my morale be sub-perfect? Oh, I'm standing in a dust cloud. Well, I kind of, I can't give specific movement orders, obviously, because we don't have the initiative necessary to know where the enemies will be. There really are no words for how annoying those two perfect stuns were. Like, not only did they get two stuns, but they got them at the most effective moments. Yeah, real, real bummer there. Uh, yeah, the Moonleaf's run out. Nothing we could do about that. Okay, now we have to go back to the village to let them know that we did it. What was the quest you had for me? Colonize Uska. I mean, we're going to, but we're going to burn this village down too just to make it eight. Because I want my I want my damn quest reward. Or um legendary deed reward. Okay, so we're getting pretty close to where we were going already with the uh with the technologies. We are going to want open pit mine. I wonder how early we should get rider. And we're gonna want pillage as well, at the very least. Let's get open pit mine. We're gonna want that gold mine. Okay, 
you do that stuff. This is going to push you to almost ecstatic. Very close to ecstatic. And we're already at 40. We'd have to get to 80 influence to do this thing, which to be fair is probably the best thing we could. Like this is, this is good if we could manage it. Right now we're going to end up at 66. So we wouldn't, we wouldn't have to goose it that much. This city has a fair amount of, uh, fair amount of population. You know what? I'm going to... I guess, is there even a reason? Yeah, if we finish the sewer system, we can pop the emeralds and the city will go to fervent. So let's stay on this until... Yeah, we'll get we'll get the sewer done, we'll pop to fervent, and then we'll figure some, some more things out from there. And I'm going to go ahead and heal the basic unit here may as well uh, I do believe that we're seeing wait what oh right healing costs your action point I do believe that we are seeing uh, hostiles spawn out of these villages this village on the very earliest possible turn which obviously sucks uh, so we met Brown. There's a Brown Ardent Mages player who is very nearby. Very nearby indeed. I have a lot of concerns about our opening position here. I'm really glad that we're not playing on Endless, honestly. Uh, yeah, I forgot that I forgot that healing was going to consume the action point. And if we did it on the one unit, we should do it on the hero too. Let's get it out of the way. All right. So now that this city, <clears throat> now that this city is at fervent, let's go ahead and sweep everybody onto this just for a moment or two. We'll get to 80. 80 is right. 80 is where we want to be. Okay, winter. Wow, we're really moving through the phases of the game here. Mine, don't you dare. Okay, we got it. Um, yeah, so we're at 66. We need another 14 points of influence over the next two turns. So we can move some people back to here. Honestly, this does the job, right? All right, standard, standard first winter. It's always the same. That's going to have to get dealt with, but it's going to have to be next turn. Let's do this thing. And even more than usual, pretty good idea to let the militia handle this if we can. Because the health on our units is no longer a free resource. Militia will still heal up naturally. We're getting... We're getting run down. Actually, I guess you can be on the attack. I don't really want the hero to be on the uh, on the attack here. But by the time this guy goes, all of all of the enemy units attacks will have already been spent, so they can't deal damage to him. I guess one of you needs to. Yeah, that's fine. It is, in some ways, really nice to have your major military units have a lower initiative than your than your militia. All right, so there is our deed. That could have gone a lot worse. Now we got to go clear these fools out, and then we can start trying to figure out what the hell we're gonna do after this. I have to say, though, I do feel like we've we've sort of planted our feet in a pretty strong way here. Is that that is a player border? Okay, criminy. What does Ranf look like? 
Hmm, that's not bad. Rumbling stones and lava chimneys. Obviously, there's this oasis over here, which still gives us the approval. Um, yeah, we would build here and then, like, expand that way. Yeah, I think there's a lot of good stuff going on there. I am thinking about putting that, putting up the next city, like, probably pretty close to right now. Like, uh, we pacified the villages in Anar, which is a shame. Did not, did not really do very much for us there. What was it that the Ursus wanted that I didn't want to do? Oh, we are actually going to do this. Okay. Yeah, good enough for me. Uh, we do need to keep you on that. I guess I don't. Well, it looks like it doesn't make a difference. I was going to say we can move somebody in the, in the capital over. But no, it's fine. So yeah, we're going to have a lot of enemies around us. A lot of, uh, a lot of stuff to pillage, potentially. Making pillage an even better play than expected. Will you please attack me so I don't have to spend my action point? Thank you. Downright kind of you, sir. Yeah, more body. More body seems good. More bodies is more good. What did we just finish? Open pit mine. So, like... Riders, I think? Maybe? We'll get riders. That'll be nine to move us into the next era. And then we'll get pillage to be our tenth to finish our faction quest. I think that seems sensible. Defeat three armies led by a hero... Earn 2,000... I mean, there's no universe where we get that. And I'm not terribly concerned about it, obviously. Okay. Time to do that thing again with the hiding. Now, this time... I think we still want to be careful with these units. Because remember, these things have free counter. But yeah, that seems fine. Wow, we are getting torn apart. Yup. Jesus Christ. Oh, right. I forgot the other thing about uh, about dust care. Or, sorry, no, this soul leech. Uh, whenever a unit that a stalwart has attacked dies, the stalwart heals for 20%. It does not have to have actually done damage. It just has to have attacked it. Um, so that's an important part of maintaining our, uh, maintaining our health levels as well. So, okay, we get to stick around to full health. Good siphoning. Way to vampire. So, I probably then want to move my army up this way. Because we need to check out what's what else is going on up there. We don't actually know what that region is like. And here we can move you. Oh, th that's right. It doesn't change anything, though. And I think I'm not going to spend dust on population in either of these cities because we're going to be able to buy two points of population for that same amount of money in the new city. So, yeah. The plan. It exists. I sure hope green doesn't snipe me here. It's 225... This would not be a... That's not worth doing, right? I mean, we're producing money pretty quickly here. And making sure we get the region and the pa already pacified minor faction they're in is probably pretty valuable. 225 is a lot of population. And our fervency is, is fake, effectively. I 
This is a really good minor faction for assimilation purposes too. It doesn't help our army at all, but honestly, I think the the Broken Lords are one of the factions that n like need a hole in their army patched the least. Maybe their their basic deal is pretty strong. All right, I'm gonna do it. We're gonna we're gonna rush this up. Yeah, let's let's do like that for the moment. And we're definitely just going to produce a whole bunch of military units cuz we're going to need them. Actually, sorry, don't do that. Cuz by when those two get done, we'll have the rider design. We probably want to build some riders. A little bit of aggressive cavalry can be a very useful thing. All right, we did in fact pacify the uh the Ursus, please, please, please tell me we're not going to get sniped now, now that we've put all the resources in and made all the decisions. Uh, Uska got capitalized by, or er, got uh, colonized by Brown. Okay. This is a lot of aggression. We're seeing a lot of aggression early on here. <laughs> Get close, but stay inside my territory, please. Let's merge you up. And then, is it going to make more sense to be... Oh, we're definitely going to want to be up here, right? Because we're expand We're trying to expand into that. Or that. Again, either, one, either way, this is the move. Okay. So, somebody finished the museum. Who was it? Who done it? Pink. Okay. One of the few players that is not neighboring us. We still don't actually know purple. We still don't actually know green's deal. But yeah, I'm definitely um I'm definitely nervous. Let's grab pillage like I was saying. We are going to have to get access to the mercenary market at some point. We will need heroes. But I think pillage is probably going to be necessary for us to be able to afford any heroes in the first place. So, seems like a solid move. And then you build me a rider. Build me a pair of riders. Oh, actually, hold on. Never mind. We're in a new era. Let me, let me update my unit design here. So right now, they're 3734 with 32 damage on 108 life. If we give them standard iron gear, the difference is not huge. So hammer versus anti-cavalry stuff, it's got to be a hammer, right? It is a real shame that they can only use one-handed hammers and they have no offhand. It does feel a little, a little wasted stats-wise. But, I mean, as you have seen, fast-moving unit with stun capacity can be very annoying. So the difference, the difference is pretty, is pretty noticeable. Now, were we to compare that against being equipped with the glass steel, uh, eight defense, 28 life. Okay. Yeah. I think the, the glass steel gear compares unfavorably to tier two iron or rather it compares pretty favorably. Like it's, it's pretty much the same, but it costs glass steel. So obviously we will not be doing that. Did increase the cost of those riders some very significant amount, though. I'll say that. And there's nothing I want to. No, nothing I want to fire. All right, let's go. Let's go do the thing. So nervous that the region is going to get sniped right before I put the village down. Okay. All right, we immediately got spawns. The instant it became clear that I was going to be in here, spawns. Uh, and it is a three village region. That's so good, y'all. Uh, so let me put, let me put two people on influence so that next turn we can assimilate the Ursus because obviously uh, three village Ursus assimila assimilation is phenomenal. 
Uh, and then you also build me a rider. After we finish pillage, we're like maybe thinking about meritocratic promotion immediately and just having a having a six unit army roaming around because I think that aggression is gonna be the name of the game. More units is better better burn down speeds and stuff, so Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's nothing else we need to do. I had this feeling oh, no, uh, yes, there is there is something else we need to do. It's deal with the new city. Uh, so first of all, bam, bam. Secondly, uh, mill foundry into that. And probably not everyone on dust. I respect what you're going for there, but we do, we do get some things done. So yeah, you can see some pretty, pretty aggressive population plays are possible. Obviously, the fact that we're not getting any population for free really sucks. Uh, and there is our faction quest. We have, we have gained the Quivering Circlet. So, a pretty good reason for all of our governors for all of eternity to be broken lords, I suppose. This is most interesting. As well as discovering great new advances in magic and alchemy, we have also discovered something ancient and powerful. A simple circlet that hums with suppressed power. The power of the Marquis grows daily. There are those who whisper in my ears that I should bring him into my inner circle, even make him the king's hand. Our history is rich with examples of warring factions coming together through unexpected alliances. Those who recommend this conveniently forget that there are just as many stories of realms that were torn apart by unions as ill-considered as this one would be. While the nobles and populace watch Martin de Ildan de Saluzzo, I will push ahead with my own plan. Explore, find additional sources of dust, gain greater control over the nearby regions and peoples. That is how I see our people surviving, not by turning into armored leeches. A new city is good, and new watchtowers will help us to hold it. Perhaps I can find a way to convince my subjects that we can survive and grow without this obscene feeding. Oh cool, colonize a new region. <laughs> right after the turn after I did that. Well... Stigarnal? What's what, what kind of villages? Kazanji? Kazanji are probably not super relevant to me. This down here is Nidya, which is not hugely different. You know, uh, combat, flying combat units, like kind of all the same deal. Uh, yeah, that's very inconvenient. I really, really, really don't want to be on settle another village or settle another city. Uh, I know I said we might go meritocratic next, but we probably... It probably makes more sense for us to do something like Imperial Highways, right? Get some more dust income, or... Now that we've kind of gotten established a little bit, and we have a very powerful reason to get some governors in play, maybe now it's time to get Mercenary Market? Just go to 11 Tier 1 technologies <laughs> before we research anything else? And then we're probably going to start just like pillaging some of purple stuff along the border just to just to make some money. But I got to we got to get over here and deal with these obviously. Hey, hi. Couldn't help but notice you are all in my way. And the Urkins are stirring. That doesn't mean the first one has spawned yet, I think. It's just a thing to start thinking about. There will be Urkins and soon. All right, let's Equip you up with some real gear. Uh, so let's see. Alayi is going to be cavalry. Maybe I should have put spears on the riders. The ardent mages are all going to be infantry. They probably won't have ranged units yet. I think for the moment we probably want to go big swords. Honestly, the difference isn't even that significant in terms of defense. I mean, obviously, a lot of the benefit of the shield is that block and sharp sense increase your uh, your defense by quite a lot on triggers. But yeah, I think we'll we'll just go for the higher layer, a higher level of infantry slayer alongside the better offensive stats. And also, movement trinket. Like, is that is that worth doing? 
it does increase the cost of the unit by like a third. But yeah, this gets it up to the same speed as the rider. Yeah, all right. Uh, so it shouldn't be a problem, but once again, let's, uh, let's try to minimize the damage I'm going to have to buy off here. So you're going to get to hit this one. You're going to move here. We can, we can micromanage this a little bit. They have two movement. Damn it. Everybody's stuns are always going off. All right, I am not going to have the hero get involved. We're going to do this entirely with stalwarts for the healing purposes. You're just going to get over here and provide moral support, I guess. Wow, y'all. You could you could maybe step that up a little bit. Yeah. All right, so you absorb the actual attack. Get him? Ah, uh, that would have been a really really good turn for a get him. Go provide moral support over there now. Okay, cool. All right, getting good combat XP at least. Do we have... Okay, no, we have no mystery deposits. And knowing the location of that other city, that other, that third village is going to matter because currently we're not we're not getting the population from it. So, all right. Oh yeah, and it doesn't it doesn't count as completed for this either. Okay. So, here in the capital, reckon we ought to well, wait. 3 4 5. We should build one more military unit, right? To to round out the core. I think two riders is probably enough. Yeah. All right. And we'll have these guys sort of like move up as a group. So yeah. All right. I think this is this is the plan then. 130 buys a point of population in a shimlor, although maybe it shouldn't. Maybe this is hero money. Yeah, getting any any Broken Lord heroes we could get would be awfully good right now. And we have managed to get our total income up to a pretty respectable spot. All right, I think actually this is, this is where I'm going to call it for the moment. Uh, that is going to be it for us for today. Thank you all so much for watching. When you come back next time tomorrow, we're going to start probing our nearby neighbors for weaknesses because we're going to need to find some. My suspicion is that our options here really break down to go to war with somebody or be slowly strangled out of the game on uh, Room to Settle. And it doesn't really even seem like much of a choice when you think about it. So come back next time tomorrow to see how we deal with that. And we'll see you then.